We probably, you know, we haven't been, as a university, been doing things as, as, as long as Leeds Beckett in the uh, energy and building performance field. And one of the things that sort of occurred to us is there didn't seem to be um, a national governance network. A lot of other European countries uh, and internationally there are, there are um, communities of practice around building performance. And so one of the first things we did was we got all the people together that we knew worked in this field to start thinking about how can we make sure that we share learning, don't make the same mistakes twice, don't repeat each other's research, um, extend the methodologies and the ways and things in which we're doing. And the idea for the Building Performance Network has come together um, over the last year and we're just at the point where we've got Articles and Association, um, some initial members, some initial funding. Um, so all I'm going to do is, is sort of open it up to all the people who are interested in building performance to, to come and get involved. So I'll talk a little bit about some of the objectives that we've laid out. So why have a building performance network? Um, it's clear that energy efficiency, um, DEC, CLG, they're interested in this problem. Industry are interested in this problem. And actually the ways and means in which we gather the data, analyze the data and interpret the data to make things better um, is an incredibly important issue. So one, one of the key things that we identified is there was actually a bit of an explosion in people doing this type of work. And as we started seeing some of the results that, that some people were presenting, it's actually, there's a bit of a skill shortage in some respects. And so one of the other objectives was to consider how do we make it easier for people to get robust results? And the other thing is really about the UK itself. We actually lead in a lot of this stuff. We're actually very good at it, especially from a socio-technical perspective, which is again something Malcolm alluded to about the linkages between occupants and building performance. Um, but actually, it can be quite hard to find some of the stuff, um, especially if you want to go sort of pre-internet. You actually have to dig quite deep, and actually there's a lot of knowledgeable people out there and how do we get access to them, how do we all get together, how do we all talk and share. So we initially set up the event and what we quickly found out is that somebody else was doing this already. There was a, a group led by UCL um, <laughs> and what we did do was manage to pull this together into some, a national group of about sort of 30 organisations. Um, so at that point, at the starting point, we set out what we were going to try and do. The first thing we wanted to do is to build a community of practice. And when we think about community of practice, it's great as academics we all come together in, in these rooms. It's actually, the community of practice is wider than that. It includes industry. It includes government. It includes building owners. So the next thing we wanted to, to understand is what are the methods that people are using? How are we going about to collect the data? And are we giving reliable data to help the industry make its decisions? Um, we wanted to make the data that we create usable so that the industry can use it, so that people can take it and trust it. And we want to make people aware of all the work other people are doing. And as Mike Ormish has said this morning, he's monitoring 100 houses. We're monitoring 40, or we've just finished monitoring 40. Leeds are probably monitoring 50, 60, 70 on an ongoing basis. There's lots of people doing this work in both academia and the industry. And actually, you know, what you can tell from 40 properties isn't as much as what you can tell from 400. And how do we work together and share that data and share those learnings? Um, and the final thing is, how do we get that data back into practice? How can we make sure that what's being done in terms of delivering high-performing buildings, either in the domestic or the non-domestic sector, how do we get that evidence into practice? And I think we can see in the UK, you know, uh, certainly with things like the Green Deal and <laughs> in the domestic, there's a paucity of data that perhaps would have helped make better decisions in terms of shaping that policy. So who are we looking to get involved? What we were keen for it not to be is to be an academic exercise. If we want to make impact with the data and studies that we're delivering, we actually have to bring in the industry. So we've engaged with building products manufacturers, construction companies, building owners, 
and policy makers. And also another, another part that we've started engaging with is the uh, manufacturers of the equipment that we use to measure the stuff with. Because we all need to be talking, because it is, it's a, a wicked problem, as Malcolm said, it's a complex socio-technical issue. And understanding all the joins is really what the Building Performance Network's all about. So, in about a year ago, we established a working group. So these are the, the, the members of the working group. What we, what we felt was that if we actually got 50 people in a room every time to try and get something decided, we didn't feel that, that we would get that done as quickly as we wanted to. So we've had a mixed industry and academic working group pulling together things like branding, things like articles and memorandum of association, what are the rules by which we might be governed. Um, so we can see we've got a mix of um, no, so it's UCL, uh, University of Salford, Leeds, Sheffield, Glasgow School of Art. We've also had Wilmot Dixon involved, Graf Insulation involved. But also we've also been building the awareness, um, so we've been inviting people to the working group to show that what we're doing. And, and that's kind of important. So what are the key activities that we think that we will be doing? So data collection and analysis of best practice. What we're not going to do, it really is, is really fundamentally what we're about, what we're not going to do is do research. That's really for the members to do. It's not another competing thing that needs to feed itself with money from DEC or the research councils. It is about joining the research together with the relevant people. The other thing we're not going to do is create our own standards. We're not there because it, what happens if you create a standard is you defend it. We're there to push the boundaries, to constantly challenge the existing standards and try and think up better ways of doing things. So the ideas that we have is a peer review mechanism, so the ability to share and talk about individual studies as a group, get access to people to give a second look at the work that's been done. Development of collaboration tools and network events, so how can we share the data, how can we learn what's out there. Um, keeping track of current studies so that people can see, actually I'm doing something like that, someone's done it before. Can I go and talk to that person and learn from them about the practicalities? I think one of the things in working in building performance is, you know, 5,000 words in a journal paper doesn't tell you about the trauma that is required to collect data from buildings. And there's a lot of hidden pragmatic skills about data collection, about data analysis, that actually we can only really share as a community of practice when we build relationships. And also communication with key groups. And when we think about that communication with key groups, it's about the industry networks, it's about policy makers, and making sure that what we learn is made available. It's not just tucked away in a journal somewhere or sitting on a shelf. Make it available. When there is a request for evidence, can we, as a group, respond to that quickly and sensibly? So it's really about linking and coordinating and providing a focal point for the work as a community. And really the thing is, it's, it's not a thing that will exist in its own right. It will be a member-owned organisation. It will have uh, membership much in the same way as an institution does. Um, we're still working out some of the fine detail of this, but we're really looking at an elected um, council, an appointed board, and then a, a small lean management team to help coordinate and manage projects. So when we're talking about doing things like evidence reviews or running events, that's really what that management team will be doing. The fundamental thing to know is it's all about the members. So the m movement towards of what we're going to do is at the moment, we're just finalising the governance, we've got a web page, we've got some, some branding, which has uh, generated more emails than anything else. Um, putting together some marketing material and doing things like this, going around and speaking to the constituent elements of people who are interested in this subject area. By October to February, um, we should have some CQORN funding in place, we've already had some commitments from the, from the core members. We also have an EPSRC network bid in as well, which should give us some traction and allow us to do some outputs for industry. Um, we're going to do some initial State of the Nation reports, and I'll say what those are. Um, and we want to widen, in this phase, widen participation. 
because we want more people to say actually yes I'm interested in that and there's lots of really good examples of of working together outside of your own institution how, how much you can learn and how quickly you can learn things if you're plugged into those kinds of networks and what we're aiming towards is a launch at EcoBuild um, where we will have an AGM so all of the people who've expressed an interest over the last six months or seven months we will all sit down and start talking about what we want the thing to look like in terms of the council and then the council will appoint a board to manage the day-to-day -day running of the business. Um, what we're working on at the moment is um, three <coughs> reports. Um, the first um, is being led by Rajat Gupta and Michael Wilmisher. Um, that's really looking at what's going on what data are we collecting, what have we done over the last few years, where have we aggregated the data, where are the sources and how can we get access to them. The second report which we've, we've currently sort of got a bit of funding in place for is about the power and value of data. So that's what are the key findings, what are the big issues that the data is pointing to. Um, and that's being led by UCL and Sustainable by Design. And then the final one, which we, we haven't got the funding in place for yet, is really the methods and facilities one, which is really what methods are out there, what are the new methods that people are using, what's the experimental stuff, what's the regular stuff as well for, for people who are entering the market, what are the measurement approaches, and what are the key facilities we've got, because there are a lot of things like environmental chambers, um, thermal labs, what are those facilities that are available? So... Very short and sweet. Um, so essentially, I'll, I'm the first contact point for this at the moment. So if anybody wants to talk to me about this, about getting involved, about getting on mailing lists and making sure that they're aware of what we're doing as we're doing it, please just take my contact details. Um, at the moment, we have a, 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 an interim board, essentially, who are managing the project up, up to the point where we can uh, get it launched at EcoBuild. But the, the key point is it's not about control, it's about members. And the more members and active members that we have, the better it will be for us as a sector. We'll be able to feed in and influence um, and improve the quality of everybody's work by sharing our experiences, by sharing what we're doing, um, and making sure that we don't forget. And I think to some extent, you know, one of the causes of us forgetting a little bit from certainly the work done in the 80s is A, obviously the internet, because most of the stuff you have to write away for, but B, because we didn't actually have a formal institutional structure where we can sort of hold that institutional memory. Okay, thanks very much.